Well, a lot of times at my house, people just kind of randomly show up and, and still we have wonderful, wonderful visits. But today, in advance, I contacted Leslie to see if I could come and visit her absolutely gorgeous garden in Charlottesville, Virginia. You know, my son went to UVA and I've done podcasts with you. It's, it's just been incredible. And so we got here and the weather could not have been more perfect and her garden could not have looked more perfect. And so she indulged me. We had so much fun. I mean, what's better than Linda Vodder walking around your garden? <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'll tell you what's better is walking around it with you because she is just an incredible, incredible gardener. So thank you for doing this, Jeff. Loved it. Thank you for allowing me to just kind of show up <laughs> and do a garden tour, but I bet you get that a lot. I, I mean, not with special people like you. So well, it's, it's thank been you for coming. an absolute delight. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness, do I have a surprise for you today. I am at the home of gardener extraordinaire. You have, may have heard her on her podcast, Leslie Harris, and I'm at her home in Charlottesville, Virginia. And I believe me, it, it is just, I am, I am extremely jealous. It is spectacular. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. And by the way, I'm just doing this on the fly. I'm not mic'd up and she will not be mic'd up either. So I will just try to get close enough to her so that you can hear her talk about this amazing garden. Now she lives in a home that is, she told me about 60 years old and it, it is just right off of campus. And there are, well, just so many topiaries, container plantings. And yes, she does have my same affection for this color palette. I, there's just so many, so many things that I can't grow in my garden. And not only that, but the stuff here just grows so much larger then it grows. Oh, Leslie, come up here. I want you guys to meet my friend, Leslie. Now, Leslie, for the few who may not know of your, <laughs> of your gardening vitae, tell us a little bit about what you do and how long you've gardened here and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I am a garden podcaster now. I used to run a gardening business, but I sold it to the wonderful Abigail Gardens two years ago. And my podcast is wonderful because I get to talk to people like Linda about their garden. Yeah, we did a podcast together about a year ago, I think. About a year ago, yeah. yeah. And so I'm just a crazy, you know, gardener. Um, the funny thing about this garden is that I've been gardening here for nine years. And like Linda, it's about to change. Yeah, I... I I think it's one of the reasons that we really wanted to meet up while I was here. I needed like, how do you, how do you do this? How do you move away from the garden that you love? Yeah. And I at least knew where I was moving to. You still don't know. It's, it's a little up in the air. We'll figure it out. Yeah, you'll figure it out. But whatever it is, I'm sure it will be amazing. But you're going to be downsizing a little bit. We need to downsize because we're going to be up in Greenwich, Connecticut, because we have six grandchildren and two kids up yeah. there. Yeah. So we need to be more turnkey. And yeah. this is, as you'll see, this is not the turnkey. Garden. This is not the turnkey. This is amazing. If I, I thought it was hard to leave mine, but hers is just... Uh, let's say is it's mine on steroids. What is what is this tree? Oh, it's a, it's just a crab apple, but I've made it into a lollipop, like I want to do. Wow! A lot of things like get pruned to about this size or on a step stool because that's about how tall I can reach. Uh huh. Reach. Uh huh. And uh, I don't know. It, it wants to be as tall as the ones behind you. They're the exact same tree. They look like they're about twenty five feet tall. But I just I like the pruners. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Okay, well, take us on a tour, and I'm gonna just kind of follow along. I see one of what I think is a stalwart that every garden should have is that Sedum Autumn Joy. Yeah, I brought it just one little twig of it down from Connecticut, and you know, it just multiplies, and it's yeah. such a well behaved plant. I love it. Is. it. Yeah, it really is. I these lilies. <laughs> My gosh. 
Oh my gosh. <coughs> yeah, I love how they're kind of holding the Joe Pie weed up. And um, they're, uh, yeah, they're kind of crazy. I think they're Mardigan, but I'm not quite sure. I'm a little fuzzy on some of the, some of the names. Some of the names. Well, that would be me. As often happens to me, I think she swallowed a bug. But <laughs> in the meantime, did you see all of her gladiator alliums? Lots of boxwood. Okay, so I have to ask, have you had issues with boxwood blight here? Yes, and actually those look like boxwood, but they're Ilex granata. Yes. I have a few more little boxwood in the back. I love the topiary boxwoods, just like you. Yes. Um, those are all safe, but there is one little set that has the blight and i'm thinking i might have to rip them out or i'm thinking i'm not i'm not quite sure they could recover yeah yeah, yeah we'll, see. well the um i've started working with better boxwood which is a blight resistant variety coming out of belgium you probably know about it i've heard about that one and saunders brothers is also trying that too. yeah yeah so i'm thrilled i planted a bunch of it at my cottage and so i'm at least heretofore i've not had any problems with box blight. Look at the, now are these also the holly? No, those are boxwoods. Those are boxwoods. They when look. I had my business, I had a client who needed four matching and those two just weren't quite the same type. So I took them home. Well, because I think that's what one does. Yes, they look like Green one. Mountain. I think they could be. Yeah. I've enjoyed them though. And you've got coneflower here. I, I love these stone planters. Those are, are just fun? incredible. Oh, check this out. So on this little planter here that's got the um, sweet pea coming up, uh -huh. that was a huge holly that when we moved in was like 20 by 20. I didn't even know that planter was there. And so I battled that. <laughs> oh, holly. you're kidding. No, it was huge. It just ate the front yard. And then I, I, uh, I, I kept it like at about seven feet for years and years. And finally it was declining. I was declining. I didn't want to wrestle right. with it every year. And I'm like, off with your head. You're done now. Wow. Incredible. So is this David? No, this is the early, and what's it called? You know, oh, here's a huge weed. How about that? Um, it's the dazzle early. I'm going to think of it later, but it's got okay. the word early. In early it. in it. Yeah. It's well, it's beautiful, yeah, I can't just beautiful. And you've got lots of coneflower and sweet pea, see, or a, a snapdragon. Snapdragons in Oklahoma, oh, they'd be so done by now. Oh, they would. Oh, but yeah. With our cool nights these last, if, if the rabbits would stop eating them, they would be doing very well. However, we have a family of cute bunnies that is just going to town on everything. Cosmos, well, snapdragons. Yeah. Well, you have to pick your form of charm. Exactly. And sometimes. Bunnies are cute. I mean. But they, they yes, they are cute. <laughs> is this, this looks like a salvia forensii on just, oh my gosh, it's huge. It's very happy. It's very happy. And then. Um, here's a new plant in back. Have you tried that Miscanthus um, Cosmopolitan? I have not, but it's glorious right there. I think it's I think it's going to do a good job. Okay. I don't have lots of space for really massive plants. Is this Baptisia back here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted it to do better, and and then I also have dahlias coming up. It, so you know, dahlias coming up at six inches, they're just getting mowed down by the bunnies. I need them to get to sixteen inches, and then then they can hold their yeah, own. I, I don't yeah. want the bunnies eat the small, the lower right. branches. Right, <laughs> right. So we're waiting for it. Now I do have lots of this variety, and I can't, I couldn't tell you what the name of it is either, yeah. but I love that salvia. Yeah, it just keeps coming, and I cannot name it. And look, over here, you have just a whole little village of topiary, yes. a boxwood topiary over here. We are equally as obsessed. I am. Um, I don't take care of them as well as I should, but I do have a little farm that, you know, they like being in the ground better than in pots under my care. So I have a little farm and I shift them out every once in a while. Somebody's saying, hey, I really need to get back to nature <laughs> and out of this pot. Yes. So I do. Yes. That. Well, it's just plants really do want to be outside. Now, another perennial on my must-have list is goat's beard, and you've got some back in there. That, I think, is goat's beard I have down by the... By the um... Is that some kind of penstemon? Oh, yeah, that is the penstemon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. yeah. I think that's um, Dark Knight. Dark Knight? It's mm -hmm. beautiful. And then you do what I think is absolutely an imperative, 
and you have just lots of evergreen structure and you've got pavers and gravel you're a girl after my own heart I, know, I like it it's a little feral in the back we call it a mullet garden it's business in the front party <laughs> but party in the, in the back yeah. well let's just walk that way okay okay Now, did you build these planters? I have to ask you about these. We had them built. They had them built. Fake wood. They're plastic. They're oh, good. they do not in any way. I know. They've, they've held up beautifully. It's been nine years. So. Well, and I love the way this is a great tip that you can create a partition. Yeah, we call it a porch, even though it's all one level. Yeah, yeah. Hey, have you tried this blue zinger carrots? I have not. It's a good one. It's it's um you know it's a native, which is nice. It, the thing I like about it is that it, it goes crazy in the sun, but it's actually quite good in the shade Shade, also. too. And yeah. this is Blue Zinger. Blue Zinger. I love the color, the Glaucus color. Yeah, I do, too. I love anything in that kind of blue-gray palette mm -hmm. um, because I think it, well, it lends itself at least to the southwest. You've got like a, is that a Blue Star Juniper? Maybe, or Carolina. Oh, but tell, tell me about, now you were, you were, giving me some deets I'm on this hydrangea excited. i'm all excited about this it's um somebody's been eating the leaf which is great it's a hydrangea involucrata and involucrata yeah so it's not you know i'm familiar with the macrophylla and the right and blah, blah, blah. this is different and apparently it blooms on new wood and it is going to be well my, the my my abby who bought my business said you have to have this plant. It's like having blue neon lights in your garden all summer. Well, then you have to have it. I know, but it hasn't done anything yet. She said it's coming. I can't believe the size of your lilies. That, really <laughs> that, and and a pencil holly yeah, over there, a sky a, pencil holly. I inherited that. It is the I used to have three. They do, you know, they have a they have a life that ends. But that is the tallest one I've ever seen. It's the tallest one I've ever seen. They die in Oklahoma long before they get to be that tall. Okay. And then over here, you have incredible Japanese this. maple and an abelia. Yeah, and uh, I, I inherited the Japanese maple. I think it's half of what it was. It is also slowly dying. It's kind of fun. But no, it it's colors. got a wonderful mound. And then what variety of abelia? So the, oh, those yeah. of you that know, I planted lots of abelia. This is how large they, they will get and can grow together and make a good ground cover if you keep them pruned, pruned low. Mm -hmm. But this is beautiful. It looks like maybe... That one? So when I planted them all, kaleidoscope, they were all maybe? variegated like that. And now they've reverted. And if you said the name of that one, I would say, yes, that's what it is. But I can't. It's not available to me. However, these two have reverted and they're solid green with, you know, that cute orange. Uh -huh. So it's interesting what plants will right. do. And then look at this charming, charming seating area over here. Now you are a lover of blue and white, obviously. It's, it's a thing, right? It is a thing. And and another arborvita topiary. Yes, I love my little lollipops. And is that a lemon cypress over there in the corner? And yeah. some kind of wilt contorta? What is this? Yeah, it's a, it's, it is a corkscrew willow. And I just knew I wanted to have it in a pot because, well, I'm so glad now because I'll take it with me. And I think what I'm going to like about it is how easy it is to propagate and share. And also, you know, you can use these sticks and arrangements, which is so fun. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I, I think it's going to make me happy. I love the way you have limbed up just so many things. I call it romancing the ordinary. When you just take a common plant and you turn it into something magnificent. But you have to keep at it, right? Because it wants to grow from oh, the bottom. Oh yeah, it wants to grow yeah, from the bottom. Is saying, hey. Yeah, but that's happy work. Yeah. Because it's it's self-evident what needs to be done. Do you need me? I was just gonna see if you want me to do anything. Oh, she's got it. She's got yeah, it. I, I'm, just, I'm just pretending. Luckily, she I'm just, I, yeah, I'm just pretending. Can you that all the way, sweetie? Hopefully the audio is good enough that everyone can hear it. And you've got two tours in here, great garden ornaments. And look, this just amazes me too. See, this is where I, it's not a 
good thing to really have garden envy. But I, you know, I just do. Look at the sweet peas that you have. That's from my mother and it's a perennial one. And the only sad thing is that it doesn't have a scent. But this year I've grown a bunch of the regular annual ones from seed and boy, do they smell good. But, and this is some crazy cherry that was a volunteer. And I thought, well, you'll just be a stand for my sweet peas. Yeah, well, and, and, and it is happily filling the bill. It is, it is. And you've got balloon flower here getting ready and some, looks like some. Well, let's see, we've got some of that allium, the perennial allium, and I think that one is millennium. Um, and then um, I just wanted people to notice that I've taken to mulching with my leaves, which is working out uh -huh. really well. It really is. I used, to, I used to bring loads and loads of double shredded hardwood bark in, and I'm like, hey, how about how about let's do for free? Yeah, yes. And I mix in some wood chips, and it's not as beautiful, it's not as finished, but I'm getting used to it, and it's well. It's and good. when it and when you have complete, you're mostly doing live mulch with all of your plants. Exactly. So, I think it's, I, I think it's just wonderful myself. I got one of the. Here's my little sales pitch. I love Works Tools, and I got one of their their Works leaf shredders. Oh yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Look back in here at all of the high. Oh, there's lace caps back in here. And Brunera, it looks like. More hydrangeas. And this is really so peaceful here. A still bee, looks like some dicentra, some bleeding heart, lots of hosta, lots and lots of fern. I'm surprised that, that the bunnies haven't gone after your hosta. Well, that's a great question. I think they mostly live where they, I, they must prefer snapdragons. And there is, although I have a deer fence all around this property, there is some deer damage that we'll see because they've been sneaking in. So what's your favorite deer resistant varieties? Um, I would say that if I had to garden without a fence, I would just lean toward that list that Rutgers database puts out. If anybody's interested, you just Google Rutgers University deer resistance. Rutgers University deer resistant, in case you couldn't hear Leslie. Now, before we take that shady walk, down here look look at this i i hear everyone out there in youtube land gasping <laughs> just gasping at the magnitude of the size of it and the view and i can't say it enough this weather is just unbelievable because charlottesville i've been here when it's been plenty steamy no, we're we're so comfortable today, and it's it's very unusual and lovely. We've had a we've had a great spring. We've actually had a pretty good one in Oklahoma. Okay, so back to our. So predominantly, what type of trees do you have on your property? I am very happy to announce that they are almost all native, and most of them are tulip poplars, which host some caterpillars but i have a couple of sizable white oaks which as most people know those are the plant to have in your yard yeah because they host the most types of caterpillars and then we have plenty of dogwoods too gorgeous well and then as always i'm struck by how large trees get here I know. and so quickly and you've got looks like some carex and some hookra or hookarella hookarella yeah somebody's eating it which is that used to bother me. It doesn't anymore. Yeah, I think you just have to kind of come to terms with it. Exactly. A great pot. Okay, this is a wonderful shady combo. What kind of fern is that? Ostrich? So this is the uh, ostrich fern. Yeah. And if you put it in a pot, just like in your garden, it will want to take over the pot. So there's some editing. Yeah. Um, and leave room for a couple of other interesting things. But I rarely change this pot. It's, it's kind of permanent. Well, and you know what? If it works, don't mess with it. Right. Okay, so coming down this path, what is this huge tree right in front of us? That is a tulip poplar. It's the biggest one on the property, and it's probably the same age as the oak that's right next to it. Tulip poplars grow very fast, and so they're both probably about 120, maybe maybe up to 150 years old. Oh my goodness. And uh, aren't they wonderful? They're married. 
they're married. They are. It, it, they probably share some kind of root system. They'll, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And all of these azaleas, when they were in bloom, must have been incredible. There's a lot of color. And rhododendrons. And, and you leave no nook unplanted, Leslie. Yes. My gosh. And Leslie said that she does this. Her husband mows, but she does the gardening herself. And I just... So when we talk about garden maintenance, what would you say is what degree of toil do you have? What do you spend the most time? The sunny borders in front really get my attention. And you'll see there's a little topiary parterre in back. But once you establish a woodland garden with large shrubs, it's, I mean, it, it's so easy. There's a lot, there are some places in this yard that I just don't have to go through more than once or twice or three times a year, except for pleasure. Oh, and look at this. This, this, I immediately thought this must be your Zen place, your meditation. It is, it is. And it is just beautiful. Just that highly pruned, that poor, yes. <laughs> that poor, uh, I mean, um, what is that? A uh, Privet? Um, no. I can't tell from here. No, it's, it's not the boxwood that was in front, but it's the other one that's escaping. My well, it's, um, Torture. whatever. It looks great. Oh, it's it, an it, ilex. It's an, an ilex. ilex. And the black mondo grass, which makes me very happy. Yes. And just the sound of the birds. Man, yeah. you come out here and you'd never want to go in. And tell, now, do you have a mosquito problem? Well, I do. And we do have a stream running through the yard but plenty of people um you know it, they're just around and that's just the way it is yeah and so um i have discovered this cute little thing called thermocell that i've uh, yes on amazon do you uh-huh uh-huh yeah yeah uh -huh. and it just i can't it doesn't help when you're gardening because you're moving too much right but it helps at cocktail time yes it helps at cocktail time and i am um, and, or I think they need to make a locket version that you can just yes. you can wear around yes. your neck. But then I, it does kind of put out a little bit of a of a vapor or something. Yes, and I hope that's safe. But do your listeners know that the mosquito fogging services are not really helping anything? So why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I have never used one. I did once because I thought I was having a family reunion mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, we want to be comfortable. So I had them come and then I started to get smart by listening to podcasts and, and having good smart people on my podcast. Turns out, y'all, that there is no chemical that only kills mosquitoes. They're going to kill, kill all everything the beneficials. Exactly. Including beneficials. And the other thing is that mosquitoes, although they're not the great flyers of the world, most of them that bite you have not come from your yard. They fly. They've yeah. come from somebody else's yard. Yeah. So yeah. it's just kind of a scam. And please, I, I hope that you consider um, just using the thermocell or maybe putting DEET on your skin. And let's cross our fingers that that doesn't cause anything bad. Yeah, um, right. But we know that the Mosquito Joe type of foggers are, are really not helping our insect. Right. Problem. I um, But it, this might be an opportunity for you to talk a little bit. Speaking of podcasts... So tell people how they can find your podcast and oh, yeah, how on. frequently you, you, you publish. I go, um, I put out a podcast every two weeks and I put it on Apple and Spotify. Um, and I think there are a couple of other ones, but those are the two big ones. And the format is that I love to talk about what I'm doing in my garden, but I love to have a great guest like Linda or somebody mm -hmm. else talk about their garden or their book that they wrote or whatever it is. And then, um, yeah, it, I put it out every two weeks. It's called Into the Garden with Leslie. Into the Garden with Leslie. And we'll make sure to put a link. Thanks. So that you can listen to not only her expertise, but the expertise of other great gardeners out there. Look at this rhododendron. Mm -hmm. And I love the way as tightly packed as your garden is that there, there's great visibility because you can see through so many of the things here. I love that you can see through one plant and into the beyond. Yeah, it's fun. You know, they talk about creating garden rooms. Yes. But with this particular landscape, I wanted to be able to see a lot at once from where we were up by the kitchen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I uh -huh. thought that was important. Well, and, and you can, and I think you've definitely done both. You've created garden rooms and also 
great views from up above. I love the patina on these old metal chairs. When you sit there in winter, you can see the whole yard. Obviously, we've got a problem now with foliage, but that's okay. Right. Well, that's, that's how it is. And that's the beauty of a garden is that it transforms over time from one season to the next. Now, this is a great... Um, a great cheat on creating. Have you done so? I've oh, done yeah. Oh, yeah. A topiary. Yeah, yeah. So it, my daughter came up with this idea. She had these extra balls, and she was doing this at her house. She gardens up in Connecticut. And I said, hey, do you have any extra? And she gave me this. This is a fantastic old urn that was from my either great or great-great-grandfather. Wow. I got it from my mother's Old Town Alexandria garden when she had to move. And so, anyway, yeah, I think this will be a pretty beautiful thing that will be coming with us. <sighs> It, you know, that's the nice thing. And I think it's, it speaks to the importance of container gardening. Yes. Because you can take a lot of things with you. Exactly. And, not, and even if you are downsizing to on a smaller template, you can still have the same kind of feel. Exactly. Hey, Linda, I wonder if your viewers will notice the snag tree that we've left. Oh, look at that. And look at the top. Yeah. So my arborist, who is amazing said we could cut this down it's it's dying it's almost dead or we could leave it because when a tree dies everything else starts to live so if you want to host a lot of insects and therefore a lot of birds wow then you can leave that and we'll do a pull test on it every year <gasps> to make sure it doesn't hurt anything the other thing he did was that he took his chainsaw and he made that little hidey hole yes in case a migratory bird might want to move in move in all we've ever seen are squirrels but we're still hoping oh, you know what that's okay build it and they will come yeah it's pretty cool, huh? At first we thought it was so ugly, but my, I don't know, I'm just I wouldn't it. even, I, you know, I think it just looks very much indigenous to the area. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer we garden, the more we realize that the cycle of life. I, I think what, <laughs> what is always so sad to me is our cycle of life in Oklahoma is, is, quicker. <laughs> is very short uh. compared. But the idea of leaving a dead tree on your property is something I would never have considered. If you don't like the looks of them and if you have a place to hide them, even leaving dead logs yes. is really good habitat. Well, and the thing is, you have the luxury of so much to detract the eye. I would have not even noticed. Um, but then there's other, when we had a horrific ice storm that came through. You know these ice storms that are once in a hundred years that come every year now? Yeah. So we had one of those and it just decimated my, my huge hundred year old oak in the front. And I left a lot of it there in situ because I could plant azaleas and things around it. Um, but it was, you know, it, for me, it was one of the contributing factors to moving. I just, I wanted to go before the tree went. <laughs> so, and I love at just, is this, are these, what are these? Chemiciparous up here? Uh, yeah, I think. Um, let's see, the little two. two the, yeah, the topiary. The Those are incredible. Oh, yeah. Aren't they fun? And do you know that I got them at a big box store? I was not shopping for them, but I could not leave without them. You know, I, there's so much great stuff to be had at big box stores. The sad thing is, is that just so often they're not taken care of. Right. And if you get them when they're brand new, that's great. But if they've been there for a while, you really have to do your due diligence and make sure that they, you're not inviting any new pests or diseases um, into your home. And so frequently they're not watered. What a gorgeous dining area this is. Oh, isn't that fun? We do use it a lot. And that porch beyond too in the winter, it's got a little heating unit and air conditioning because you need that. Oh, my yuccas are blooming so beautifully. Yeah, they're year. incredible. Now, we can do yucca. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> we can do yucca, but look at this rose campion here. Isn't that nice? It is beautiful. The white one is more common or the pink one. I had never grown white before. Boy, at night, you've got your own with the Annabelle hydrangeas. You have your own moonlight garden, don't you? It's kind of fun. And I do grow moonflower. They're just so small right now here in June. And look down there, you can see some Casablanca lilies, it looks like, and lots of oak leaf hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. And it's just, what I love about it is I've often said that a garden without insect wildlife is just a stage set. So everything that contributes to the magic that is your garden 
it are the noises and the bird song and the we're you know, just the a mile buzzing. from the university, so there are buses also. However, you know, when the kids are on vacation and, you know, on a weekend when it's quiet, it's just lovely. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we live in a very urban area, and it's a historic preservation area, and uh, but there's so many kids on the street. And I, I just like listening to the kids and the yeah. bird song and everything, and I, can, I think it contributes to the entire atmosphere. Here's my little southwest moment with my agaves and everything that looks dry. But lavender yep. and spireas yeah, yeah. and Sounds you know like you don't have to get really exotic to create a beautiful garden I think so often we think oh you know a true gardener tries to do things that are hard and I think it's doing the things that are easy in a, an innovative way or just mixing them up or a lot just of times it's happy accidents yes this border here um, that goes around all my little t uh, all my little baby boxwoods that I torture to stay small. I actually brought these from Connecticut, Linda. Oh my gosh! They are not coming to the next garden. No. Um, they are going to stay right <laughs> here. But this L-shaped garden here, I thought, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do peonies, daylilies, and irises, and that was so awesome until June. And then and it's then, like boredom. Uh -huh. So I've got yeah. some dahlias coming and I think I'll stick in some zinnias to finish off the season. Yeah. And you'll have enough light down here in this little, this sunnier area. So, okay. In addition to being, is this, are these zinnia linearis? Yes. I don't know. Um, they are a short zinnia. I don't know the, um, the other name to them. Yeah. But they're going to be about a foot by a foot and they'll fill up these spaces this by and by. Beautifully. And you'll have to leave them. I know, it's so sad. So another thing uh, you might address for us is you get good rainfall here. Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> so do you have to, do you, ir is any of this irrigated? None of it's irrigated. I am a firm believer in understanding your plants. And if you have something that really needs water, you have to water it. Um, I, obviously, in times of drought, I have to get out the sprinkler and get right. to work. And we're in the city, so the bill is high. But I'm lucky enough to have a boggy place down there, so the boggy guys go down there. Yeah. And then I just keep an eye on my on my needy plants, and for the most part, I, I know what to do without installing some sort of system that I think I would break anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that is truly a luxury to not have to irrigate yeah. because I, I wouldn't be able to have a garden if no, I didn't irrigate. Sure, I, I yeah. just, and sometimes in the summer, you know, multiple times a day, it's, it's tragic. But if you want to have a garden, that's what you have to do. Otherwise you could just have a bunch of, well, I, I started to say a bunch of prickly cactus, but we couldn't <laughs> even have that because it gets too cold. But like, so, like a set of containers or something, right? You, yeah, yeah. But, Lots of container gardening. And, and again, you just have to, if you're a gardener, you know this better than anyone. You have to garden. And so you just have to love the one you're with right. and, and know. And I often say, if I can garden here, I can garden anywhere. And anyone can garden if I can garden in the land of Job. <laughs> because <laughs> I feel that's what it is. Okay, now what is the tree? Is that blooming? Is that variegated foliage down there nestled Another, in that rocky? Yeah, that, that is. I made that... Um... When you dig on this property, you get a stone. So I rolled up all these stones and I made what I call my Java the Hut um, uh, container. It is not coming with us. Uh, inside of it is a type of salic. It's a type of, um, it's, and it has a Japanese name. It's a type of willow and it is variegated. It also has pinkish red stems. And I will find out the name for you and you can put it in the notes because it's a, it's a cool It's plant. gorgeous. And I have seen that other places. It has um, green bark. On the new bark. Wow. Yeah, I love it. Wow, wow, wow. This is and you've got asters already in bloom and Yeah, that's a funky type and I don't know the name of it. I love that color. That's a good one, isn't it? It is. It's a real it, it basically blooms all summer. I just redid this bed right before we decided we were moving. And the idea was to intersperse my roses, which I'm trying to hide amongst foliage because I'm not a very good rosarian. 
and then have every once in a while there's a car carl forrester grass doing a punctuation mark uh-huh they're good cool. like 10 of yeah. them here right and then a, a repetitive bunch of this is some sort of um ami or um what do you call that stuff uh queen anne's lace queen Anne, yes and um and then sedum and then yeah, I was going to see have and a couple of dollies. And you've got some, is that Christoffi or Schuberti? Yes, one of those. <laughs> yes, one of those. One of those alliums Sounds that looks crazy. like a fire fireworks. It looks like a disco ball. And Amsonia down here. Lots of Amsonia. And those are my sweet peas that I brought from oh, the Wow, so I am so impressed. And look at your Verbena Benariensis. I, you know, I love it. And it, lots of people either love it or hate it. Oh, I love it. I love it. But it can be, um, it can really go to town it in can Oklahoma. It funny places. I don't know if, you're, if your viewers would be noticing the crazy lawn spiral down there. Do you see that? Oh, yes. So that was very tall. This was, this was, an, um, this was an idea from another podcast guest, and a woman named Marion Boswald, who is a landscape architect in um, in England, and she put out a book called Sustainable Garden, and she just had these cute little ideas of what to do to make things better and more interesting. And she did a lawn spiral. I'm like, well, I can do that. Yeah. It was very tall up until a week ago. So you just vote, mow it at different heights? Well, and... the idea is that we're putting the house on the market, and not many people would knowingly want to buy the house of a lunatic. <laughs> Like a little crazy. Well, you never know. You there, never you, know. it might be a niche market exactly. that you're just not sure about. So, I do you think? I was asked this question a lot. Do you think that when you try to sell your house, that this extensive of a garden will be a deterrent or an attractor to buyers? Because a lot of people would be really intimidated by like this. Run away, scaring. I figure there are four types of people who could be looking at this. Either crazy people like me, or people who are like, I like a garden, I'm not gonna do what she does, so I can afford to hire a little help. Yeah. Or people who are like, I really like it, but it's too much. And there are ways to simplify a garden. And in fact, I'm gonna put a lot of content upcoming in my podcast about how to simplify and what I'm doing to move. And then the fourth person is the person I hope doesn't buy it because they're just like, ah, now we will have grass. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I um, it's it's hard to say goodbye, but I think by the time, by the time you have done, you've decided to put it on the market. You've kind of done your grieving. You've kind of weaned yourself off. And spontaneous I spontaneous tears behind a wheelbarrow. That, yeah. That oh yeah. Yes. Lot. Or that um, you're thinking, oh, this is the last time I will plant this, or the last time I will plant that. Yeah. Um, but I think certainly you have created something stunning. Have you written a book about it? Have you done any writings? Have you taken a million pictures? I hope. I well, I'm gonna I'm gonna start videoing. I think and, and going a little bit once the announcement comes out. And by the time you all are watching this, my listeners will know. I think I'll just do a sort of a daily and this section and this section for posterity on Instagram. Yeah. Well, and trust me, no matter what, you will forget. You know, you think, oh, I won't forget. I won't forget. But you will forget things. And so increasingly, I find as I start my new garden that I'm not just stealing from Pinterest and stealing from, you know, Instagram, good ideas. But I'm stealing now my own ideas. Your own ideas. My own ideas from the past. I think, oh, I really loved that. And it could be something as simple as the placement of a boxwood ball that you see once you enter a gate. Wow. And how the light falls on it. Yes. So it can really be... I mean, and all this blue and white and yellow, that is my, that is my passion. This was, this was interesting that your, that your viewers might want to know about. This was lawn when we moved here and it, we hated mowing this piece of lawn. This is a steep incline mm -hmm. and the grass wasn't growing well. And I was like, yeah, this, I think that the easiest form of gardening is shrubs. And of course, I, right? okay. I would give you, if I weren't holding this camera, I would give you a high five because, and I think I think too, flowering shrubs, flowering shrubs interspersed with evergreens yeah. is just, and it, low maintenance. So, it's I, so low maintenance. I never garden in this bed. Unless they if die we, and you have to plant them again. A little pruning in the spring and that's about it. Yeah. yeah. It's so easy. It really is. And I think an underutilized practice. I, I plant and I, 
and here you've been extremely conservative too with your use of annuals because I just don't find them as lovely or as romantic. They can be they can be fun wandering through or they can you know they can dot the landscape. I've got to tell you, I mean I mean I'm I don't like to throw away money. So I didn't do as many annuals right. once oh, we yeah. understood once what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. But Absolutely. I do have tons of zinnias in there that are not even born or about an inch tall. Well, and I consider those to be an exception because those are cut to me those are also cut flower material that I, I don't think of as um cushion cushion color right you right. know exactly this is an interesting section over here you see this hyconocloa grass and some trillium well there was a tree there that used to be shady and now it's sunny so wow I would probably were i not moving i would say we got to redo this little bit right here yeah it's suffering along well that will be you know, as uh, it will be the next person, as I, I needed to replace fence and all sorts of things. And you know the jolt that a new fence will give you if you're used to an old patina. I thought, no, I just, I can't do that. I'll, that That is just something the next person will have to do. Exactly. And what is the fragrance down here? It's the, it's the quercifolia. It's oh the, my gosh. Isn't that amazing? The oak leaf hydrangeas. I don't, mine don't have that much fragrance. I think it's a particular cultivar and I wish I knew what it was. It's the last thing I ever will have planted that was ball and burlap. It, when I was done, I was so exhausted. I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah. I've, and I, as I've gotten older, I've given myself permission for other people to dig great big holes yeah. in that clay soil we're not getting any younger are we well and even if you can do it i i the way i figure it i'm doing other things to contribute to the the practice and the artistry of gardening and it doesn't always have to be something that you dig a hole, that you dig a hole to do you can you can inspire others and encourage others well this might be a great place to end leslie right here looks like a maze isn't it fun you're supposed to walk it and meditate. I have not done that very much, but maybe I should start. Wow. I cannot thank you enough for this. And by the way, I just kind of, well, I didn't just show up. You knew I was coming and we've been social media friends. You know, you're the second pretty good social media friend that I've met on this trip. Do you oh. know Brian Branton in in Alexandria. No, I don't know him. Well, I contacted him and we got together and I got a tour of his just incredible, incredible home, Aww. 1808 home. Oh, cool. And so it's just, isn't it wonderful that gardens bring us together? It is.